Now let us take into account the detailed discussion of the third step of respiration, aerobic respiration. We did discuss that the first one was glycolysis which was universal to aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Second was the Krebs cycle that was happening in the mitochondria. Now whatever has been formed in the Krebs cycle that NADPH and FADH and the ATPs of course, they would be utilized and uh, we will come to the third step of the aerobic respiration that is oxidative phosphorylation. Now there are a few questions that uh, comes to our mind and that we need to answer after understanding this. First one is that what is phosphorylation? That the process of formation of ATP is known as phosphorylation. Now because the topic says that the third step of uh, aerobic respiration is oxidative phosphorylation so you need to understand that oxygen is going to be involved in this entire process of ATP generation. Then where is oxygen needed we need to understand that but we say that aerobic respiration requires oxygen but till now whatever we have done the two steps earlier steps there was nowhere mention of oxygen so where is this oxygen required why we say that a person dies in absence of oxygen where is ultimately this oxygen needed we'll come to a conclusion for that as well and last one is that uh, what is the gradient driven ATP synthesis because this is phosphorylation that we are going to consider the generation of ATPs it is oxidative that means oxygen would be involved in it but this entire process is gradient driven and whose gradient we are talking about it is electron gradient that we will see whenever we talk about a gradient that means the electron would move from its gradient redox gradient it could be redox gradient it would be moving from one particular donor or acceptor to the other one so this is the gradient driven ATP synthesis that is going to take place so first of all you must understand where is oxygen required, where are we lacking in the equation of respiration that we need to understand and what are the results that are going to come. We did the equation of respiration, simplest was that the glucose molecule would break down into carbon dioxide that we, we had achieved in the Krebs cycle. There were six molecules of carbon dioxide which were released. This is an aldehyde which is having uh, glucose is C6H12O6 so we have to make sure that six molecules of carbon dioxide are released and at the same time six molecules of water are released okay water molecule balance could be done and at the same time 36 molecules of ATP are to be released as well till now what we had seen is we hardly had four molecules of ATP not more than that two were generated in glycolysis and two were generated in the Krebs cycle. How come we are going to reach to the remaining 32 ATPs? All we handed, had in our hand was 10 molecules of NADH2 and two molecules of FADH and four molecules of ATP. So we have to somehow reach to this 36 ATP and we have to see that this breakdown took place only when oxygen was there. So where this oxygen is going to be used? Why do we say that somebody can, uh, a cell can die in the absence of oxygen? Because this entire process of energy generation, this oxidative phosphorylation is dependent on oxygen because it is the presence of oxygen which is driving force for this entire process that is going to, you will see that, that there is chemiosmosis after this process which takes place and that is responsible for the generation of ATPs, immense amount of ATPs which accounts to almost 32 ATPs generation earlier they were generated all right but 30 of the ATPs 32 of the ATP, ATPs are to be generated over here and those are to be generated when the reduction takes place now when I say reduction over here it is to deal with the electrons loss of electrons is basically known as reduction and whenever it happens it happens with uptake of hydrogen ions. So that is what we are going to observe. We have to learn a few things that are to be crammed that there are few complexes which are present in the inner mitochondrial membrane. You need to remember them by their numbers and the names and you need to understand what is their role in this entire process of gradient driven ATP synthesis. Gradient of whom? 
electron gradient all right so this entire process is also known as electron transport system because the electron is moving from one acceptor to the next donor to and the entire process in the end it comes and joins with oxygen which makes it possible for the oxygen to take up the protons and form water now that is the role of oxygen that is why we say that oxygen is very important because the ultimate acceptor of the electrons is the oxygen it is oxygen which takes up the hydrogen ions and creates a condition that hydrogen ions are deficient that is why we get water molecule in the end and oxygen is being taken up if this oxygen is not present for instance this entire step will not take place krebs cycle would take place glycolysis would take place but there would be only two atp generations and uh, they would not be enough for enough energy and this entire process is oxygen driven that is why we term it as aerobic respiration now one thing i need uh, to ask you that uh, you might have it in your mind as well because uh, when we did uh, about prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells we did talk that uh, those cells do not have mitochondria so this entire process is taking place inside mitochondria we do have aerobic bacteria as well so where does this entire process take place in the bacteria which are aerobic which take up oxygen they also form atps so how does it take place so you need to understand this if you can guess it right that's good if you cannot then please remember that it is the mesosome where the entire respiratory process aerobic process of the uh, bacteria is taking place okay coming back to the eukaryotes let's see what is happening this is a mitochondria for for instance we are inside a mitochondria we are considering the mitochondria inner to the my, this part is the matrix where the krebs cycle is taking place all right when the krebs cycle takes place you know what we get in result that is nadh and fadh2 that is what we have and this particular mitochondria is a double membrane bound structure so we have inner mitochondrial membrane and an outer mitochondrial membrane and in between we have intermembrane space so we are taking that particular area we are considering this matrix in association with inner mitochondrial membrane and intermembrane space this entire is inner mitochondrial membrane please remember now what happens this nadh is going to lose its protons to complex number 1 this is complex number 1 please pay attention what is complex number 1 it is nadh dehydrogenase this is an enzyme which is embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane nadh dehydrogenase it takes up the protons from this particular nadh and it reduces it to nad positive all right this has been done because this has taken up hydrogen ions it has got oxidized now what happens this Uh, complex number one. When it takes up the protons, it at the same time loses the electron and throws this proton outside. That is towards uh, intermembrane space. It loses the proton, all right, and it loses one of its electrons as well. All right. When I say that loss of electrons, okay, that is that this has gone. oxidation it has lost the electrons two electrons from it so this particular complex number 1 that is nadh dehydrogenase first of all it took up hydrogen ions it took up hydrogen ions and then it underwent what that is oxidation that is loss of electrons now these two electrons they are going to move further from one complex to the other from one acceptor to the other and reach oxygen to form water now how it happens after this these two electrons which are released they are taken up by few cytochromes and are to be passed to the complex number 2 which is succinate dehydrogenase now what happens this succinate dehydrogenase takes up the electrons which have started their chain by the oxidation of complex number 1 and they reach it to complex number 2 when they reach to complex number 2 at the same time fadh2 has also undergone loss of the protons the protons taken up by the complex 2 come to ubiquinone all right this ubiquinone it gets reduced to ubiquinol on taking up these protons at the same time these electrons are also passed to ubiquinone and it becomes ubiquinol please remember this ubiquinol when it gets reduced it takes up the hydrogen ions it gives the hydrogen ions outside and at the same time again loses the two electrons 
when this these two electrons they have to reach complex number 3 so in a way complex number 2 and ubiquinone are helping the electron to reach complex number 3 now this complex number 3 and cytochrome c as you can see cytochrome c which is again an electron acceptor towards the intermembrane space that is outward from the inner mitochondrial membrane away from the matrix this cytochrome b it takes up the two electrons passes it to cytochrome c and brings it to complex number four now what is complex number three it is cytochrome bc1 complex which takes up the electrons from ubiquinol which gets reduced ubiquinone which gets reduced to ubiquinol it gives up two electrons to the cytochrome bc1 complex and then these electrons are passed to cytochrome c and ultimately they have to reach complex number four which is cytochrome c oxidase having cytochrome a and cytochrome a3 with two copper ends now when it reaches this complex number four what happens it takes up two protons again from the mitochondrial matrix it gives those two protons outside and these two electrons they come and by passing through complex number four which we know what they are they are cytochromes they are cytochrome complex a and a3 it passes through that it goes and joins with oxygen all right these oxygen molecule they take up the electrons they combine with the proton and form a water molecule all right so we did get an answer that where is oxygen being used now what is still left uh, is that where are the atps now please remember whenever an nadh molecule it loses its proton that is it gets converted to NAD positive it is what this is getting basically reduced when you are uh, sorry oxidized it is losing its one of the protons when it loses this entire process this is going to generate three ATPs do keep in mind that one NADH2 molecule is going to give rise to three ATPs we did discuss it earlier just for cramming purpose now we are going to see how it happens and one FADH it gives rise to two ATP molecules now these three ATP and two ATP molecules how they are formed we did get an answer where was oxygen required where not but we are not still reaching where we wanted to that how many ATPs are to be generated and how they would be generated so for that purpose we have complex number five all right the complex number five i would clear this up so that you get a better understanding what is complex number five all about i hope it is clear that the electron has to jump from one acceptor to the other and in the meantime it will take up the protons whichever complex enables the take up of proton it then makes sure that it loses the electron as well then that electron has to ultimately reach the oxygen okay inside the matrix and water is being formed now over here i haven't rubbed this so that you understand that this entire process would be taking place you remember the uh, mitochondrial structure that we drew so many in, in the inner mitochondrial membrane we draw these f0 and f1 particles basically now what are these f0 and f1 particles the, this, this is a crystal supposedly and you draw f0 and f1 particles in the inner mitochondrial membrane now this is inner mitochondrial membrane towards this side wherever there are complexes and wherever there is movement of protons outside there is a process known as chemiosmosis which is a hypothetical process which takes place in complex number 5 of the electron transport system now what is electron transport systems complex number 5 it is nothing but ATP synthase also known as F0 and F1 particle 